At Easter, we proclaim our faith in the risen Lord. The resurrection is far more than the greatest of miracles and a sign of divine power, though it is certainly that. It is the victory of Christ, and therefore of God and of mankind, over death itself. The resurrection of Christ also confirms for us the truth of Christ's works and teachings, that he really is truly the Father's beloved Son. The risen Lord fulfills the promises and prophecies of the Old Testament. Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. Jesus did not return to a merely natural life, as did Lazarus after his raising from the dead. Jesus' risen body was transformed in glory and has now ascended into heaven. And yet it was and is real human flesh. The risen Christ said to his astonished and frightened disciples, Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. He even ate fish in their presence to prove his words. Christ's resurrection is the pledge of our own eventual bodily resurrection in Christ's likeness. St. Paul writes to the Corinthians, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. Archbishop Fulton Sheen put it this way, The resurrection is the only answer to the question of the breach that we feel psychologically in ourselves between the body and the soul. Some thinkers, through the ages, sacrificed the body to the soul. Today, the tendency is to sacrifice the soul to the body. The resurrection reveals the sacredness of both body and soul. If there is no resurrection, but Christ is dead, one cannot believe either in the goodness of God or the goodness of man. But if he who took the worst the world had to offer and conquered it, then evil shall never be victorious again. So said the great Archbishop Fulton Sheen. The Christian understanding of salvation is not salvation of the soul from the flesh, that is, from being embodied, but rather salvation of both body and soul, through the glorified humanity of Christ. We hope not only for the salvation of our souls, but for our total restoration in the risen Lord. Jesus' resurrection is not his own glorification only, but the pledge of our own resurrection victory too. To the Corinthians, St. Paul writes, While we are still in this tent, that is, in our mortal body, We sigh with anxiety, not that we would be unclothed, but that we would be further clothed, so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. Here and now, our souls are raised in Christ from the death of sin to new life. On the last day, our bodies will share with our souls in the glory of the risen Savior, and of his Holy Mother Mary, who has already been assumed into heaven, body and soul, and reigns with her divine Son. For as St. Paul says, the goal of our faith and our hope is to know Christ and the power of his resurrection.